Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 207 of this book, quantitative comparison question number 11. These questions are called quantitative comparison. As I always emphasize, these are not called quantitative computation, which is why I wrote down computation and I crossed it out. There's a different difference between computation and, and, and comparison. Uh, when the, one is not expected to compute things, one is expected to compare things. Two things that are two things, two quantities that appear in the two columns. For example, in this particular question, in number 11, you have to have the book in front of you because I, I do not have a luxury of writing the entire thing on the blackboard. Make sure that the book is in front of you and read the problem with me. It says, a retail business that it, a retail a retail business has determined that its net income in terms of X, the number of items sold, X represents the number of items sold, is given by this expression. This gives me their net income. This expression gives me a net income for this particular business. The question simply is, in the first column they tell you, I'm going to read it first verbatim. If you do not know what verbatim means, look it up and learn it. I'm going to read it first uh, word for word here. It says the number of items that must be sold for the net income to be zero. That's the first column. In other words, they want you to find out the value of x for which this, their net income equals zero. This expression tells me their net income. For example, for example, when they only sell one unit, they, when they only sell one unit, that tells me that in that scenario, whatever the time period happens to be for every month or every week, whatever the time period happens to be, if they sell only one unit, then for that time period, their net profit is negative 378. In other words, they're losing money, $378 in that, in that accounting period. When they're selling two units, then when they sell two units, their, their net loss is going to be 380 minus 6 and so on and so forth. They want you to find a situation where uh, their net income is zero. In other words, they're not making any money, they're not losing any money. It's just, oh, break-even point is what they're looking for there. Their net income is zero. They're not making any profit, they're not losing any money. What is their break-even point? How many units do they have to sell in order to break even? And they want you to compare it with in the next column, I have 10. Now what I've seen sometimes from some people is that they sit there with this uncontrollable urge to solve this equation for the x. And you could do that if you wanted to, solve this equation for x. It's a quadratic equation. The uh, people sit there and use the quadratic formula if they remember it, or they use the factorization, they, they factor it out, and they figure out the exact value of x, and then they tell me how it compares with the 10. And if you, if you do that, if you did that yourself, you're missing the point. These are not called quantitative computation, as I keep repeating myself like a parrot. These are called comparison. All you have to do is compare it against 10. So if I were to put 10 in here, 10 squared plus 10, does 10 squared plus 10 equal 380? Of course not. In order, in order, in order for this quantity to be zero, this, this thing here, this quantity here has to equal 380. And if x equals 10, it's not going to equal 380. It's 110. 10 squared plus 10 is only 110. Even if it were 12, 12 is 144 plus 12 is nowhere close to 380. We need to get something. Anyway, how much how much it is well, we need to close to get what, what number is not the point again here also. The point here is that x, whatever it is, it's got to be more than 10. 10 does not cut it. 10 or anything less than 10 is too small versus 2, 380. We need to get to zero here. This is too small. This is too small. So quantity of x, quantity of the value of x has to be more than 10. x has to be more than 10. Therefore, the answer is A. That's all. Exactly how much it is, I'm not interested in it. But it's going to be something very close to 20 because 
20 squared is 400. See, if x were 20, 20 squared is 400 plus a 20, that's 420. Now they're making a profit. We don't want him to make a profit. If we try 19, you will see that something like this would work. Actually, it does work. But that wasn't the point. I should not have done this. The point that x, the point that 19 works was not the point here. The fact, or rather, what I meant to say is the fact that the 19 works here was not the point. The point was the value of the x, whatever it is, has to be more than 10. And that's what it is. So that's what I have to compare it against. So I'm going to erase this thing. We don't need it. Just realize the fact that x has to be more than 10 here in order for this quantity to be equal to 0. And therefore, okay, answer is A. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to these questions, go to my website at www.preppprep, F-O-R-4-J-R-E.com and send me an email. Alright, thanks.